That one? No. That's what is it? That's video. video. Incoming call, Richard Norton. We have a very special guest today. We're joined by the one, the only Richard Norton. Richie, Strength Temple, gone from strength to strength. Nice. I like that. Very nice. The first related pretty much like around uh, mental health and sport. Uh, what are your thoughts on sports impact when it's when you consider mental health on current former players? Big topic. I mean, firstly, I mean, I'm grateful that you're bringing this up as the first question. Um, this has become a huge focus of mine uh, and even now so being in Wales where I am um, some of the local rugby clubs I mean it's it's been in the news but also with the people I'm having conversations with this is a huge topic um, because we're trying to understand why it is still such a big problem um, and how we're still not tackling it or managing it very well because it comes in um, in lots of forms and with my current focus as a, as a coach, let's call it, I think I'm able to get a little bit deeper in, especially when it comes to rugby, that sort of side of things, even though I played football and I've done athletics and I work with lots of different athletes in different spaces, the conversation around that's, you know, mental health and what that is, is happening more and more but we're still having problems. And I think, you know, having these sort of conversations is a really nice way just to bring up the topic in a, in a, a slightly more informal way so we can start to break it down. Yeah. But it's a huge so have you seen have you seen more of a movement in in that approach then from, from clubs and more people looking for more support or what to do in the, in the case of that? Have you seen yeah. more of a... I've been approached by five different premiership clubs in the last two weeks about coming in and talking about this subject, this very subject. Just a bit of back, back, um, backdated information, the whole journey of me getting here and to be able to, you know, I haven't just read a book about how to improve mental health with people. <laughs> like I have been through my own battles with mental health. It was, you know, a real challenge and a struggle and it probably still lingers from time to time it's not always easy to explain. You can't just label it with, you know, the, the pressure of the game or having a bad time at mm. home or, you know, th worrying too much about what other people think of you, you know, having a bad game or, you know, deep childhood trauma surfacing later on in life. There's so many different elements to this. But if we refine it and look at the focus on how it's having such a huge effect on athletes, yeah. And people in sport, guys and girls, guys especially because of what comes with a lot of the masculine, macho, tough it out yeah. mentality, especially we look at things like rugby as a focus. Mm -hmm. Lads now, really young lads are taking their lives because they feel they can't communicate and talk about whatever it is, the darkness, the demons, whatever it is that they, they're, they're struggling with and they're feeling that they don't want to carry on anymore. That's a huge issue. So we need to have these conversations. So my focus has been from trying to get into the youth teams, the, the grassroots where these conversations need to be had even more so because there's still a lot of old mentality and yeah. disillusion and, and sort of ignoring it and brushing it to the side because no one really wants to talk about bringing it up or they just don't know how to. Yeah. And with me being recently approached by, you know, these performance uh, teams, high performance teams, premiership teams, they're seeing the issues, whether it's through more injuries, um, poor performance, you know, maybe guys are starting to come out now and talk about these issues and they're just trying to find ways to manage it. So from youth to the more mature senior teams, there needs to be practice put in place in a language where they'll understand that this is all part of the process and look at it as part of the training process. So yeah. they manage the stresses and the extra games that they're playing and the wear and tear. So we can start to make it something we can all share with each other when it happens. There's, um, there's, it, that ties into something which happened very recently in football, really, was Danny Rose coming out, the Tottenham left back, and saying about how being segregated almost from the rest of the first team when he was injured mm -hmm. had a huge impact on his mental health. Mm -hmm. And how then that led to when a potential transfer falling down yeah. Because the club who were buying him were worried that he had mental health issues. And I think that you I think he came out in that documentary that they thought we're they're taking extra time because they're worried you're mad, which is just negative language of this. You yeah. know, it ties into that 
men must be men bravado nonsense you yeah. know I think. exactly exactly well you see this on well i say i see this on many levels i work with uh guys in head funds in the city that really high powered for example have all this responsibility and this pressure and this status yeah. so we can say that's football rugby whatever it is this profile that you're building for yourself because you want to be respected you want to earn the most amount of money you want to perform well whatever it is that then comes with this um uh, extra pressure that you've got to live up to this but you don't want to show weakness you don't want to show you're vulnerable because that makes you a target or that makes you uh, maybe open for people to want to take advantage of you and not respect you because you care about what they think of you. And it's this vicious cycle of self-talk and internal dialogue that is being completely misunderstood and mis miscommunicated. So you then you segregate in this space where you feel you have no way to communicate it anymore. And this is happening throughout sport on so many different levels. And it's shocking to see the youth now almost under more pressure because of the expectations where we bring in things like, you know, the amount of social exp exposure everyone has now and what, how many people are watching yeah. you and how you let that consume you. Whereas really it should be a platform for positivity and motivation and inspiration. Well, I'm, I'm very open now. It's not, it's not hidden that my, my path has been through, in my my own personal career breaking down in sport because of injury and then that combined with personal life trauma and things that weren't addressed and that image that I created that I had to be a man up kind of a guy that didn't talk about their feelings that took me on my path that was my journey it's now become my strength because it empowers me to know that I can come out of this and I can pull myself out of this space by getting out in nature, talking to my close friends, communicating with people, knowing that it's okay to be vulnerable. So I share my story. You know, the first thing people want to hear is that, oh my God, someone else is dealing with this, something similar to me. They're yeah. not alone. It's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to have struggles because it's part of what happens as we start to develop our strengths and become more resilient and be a mm. better human being but we, we make this bigger thing because we never really get to process it and clear the air. We, we have these struggles and we battle with them ourselves. So my communication with the youth team, whether it's a premiership team, whether it's like a guy in, a, in the city, whether it's a normal general public, it's the same thing. It's okay to not be on your best form all the time. But what yeah. is bothering you? My issues are this, this and this, and this sometimes happens. And this is the emotion that I get. Can you relate to that? And someone just going, wow, that's exactly what I've been through. I didn't think anyone else talked about it or it was okay. This is a safe space. You're creating a safe space for that individual. And that might be a completely yeah. random person that I've never met before. But it's like, it's okay. I've been there. I get it. You know, I have yeah. Yeah, that compassion and understanding and respect for another human being that's obviously struggling. It's not like you're not any more of a man. It's like you're just having a bit of a struggle. You're battling, but this, you know, we can work through this together and we're going to have a tighter bond for it. And you're going to be a stronger, more powerful human being because you've embraced it. That's empowering for so the that, kids. That's empowering for the adults, you know? Do you think that people devalue their health and what they've actually got? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone's a little bit different and we're all on our own individual journeys. So when I see people at workshops, uh, in my classes, when I'm doing seminars or talks, you know, last thing you want to be doing is going, what's your problem? Or like, tell me what you're struggling with. People feel, you know, don't yeah. feel comfortable with that. So it's about creating a safe space. So you also have this power. You might not be a yeah. coach or a teacher or anything like that, but you still have the ability to go, how's everyone doing today? You know, yeah. everything okay? Do you want to talk about it? This is what I've been dealing with. And what comes up from that is people start to just kind of acknowledge that they painted this picture with its ego driving them because they've got this image of themselves and they have to uphold or maybe they don't even have a friend circle that they can talk to maybe they're you know they're lonely and they don't have anyone to communicate with so you've also got these athletes these big strong butch like you know rugby lads i used to be one you know i never want to talk about my feelings but they've 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 channeled all that energy like I did into their sport and their training. And, and that's what allows them to have an outlet 
but they've got this big like you know tough exterior they just need to break it down but it's really the, like, a little softy underneath you know yeah. which a lot of rugby players are which is awesome yeah yeah doesn't mean you just well, it taps into the you're not nails it, it, you, know, you walk over <laughs> yeah. like rhino that's fine Leave it you know but there's a there's, you know it's like a, a vulnerability that needs to come out with that that's actually empowering yeah. you can prove it. it doesn't make you any weaker it's because it's up here yeah. You know, so, so it's that, interesting to see how people like acknowledge it and make that little shift of perspective to go, actually, yeah, I was doing that, or I can change that. I am empowered to do that. Wow, that's so yeah. different how I've been approaching it. And they start to use different language to themselves and you change the story. I want to just discuss a little bit of social media with yourself. How do you feel about, on one hand, giving these people the content to do the work in order to do that, and the other? We all know the detrimental effects of having social media and having to check people check their phone and it's hard for people to get off the phone. What are your thoughts on this, like that type of social media and what is your preferred platform? Well, I mean, Instagram is definitely my most active mm. um, platform because it's the one I've been working on, I guess, for the most amount of time. Um, I do cross across, um, move across Twitter and Instagram, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. But it's just it's just understanding what space I'm and what I'm trying to put across and in what sort of language so it is more relative and yeah. more engaging because at the end of the day, if they're not bringing value, why do it in the first place unless it's just a vanity thing? Yeah. You, know, yeah. you just want people to like you and comment on you. I mean, why does should that matter? We should all be looking to not bring value, even if that's entertainment. But it's more. I think there's a lot of people getting lost in just looking for attention instead of purpose. And you know. Attention is a commodity, I get it, but it's also what kind of attention are you looking for and how is that making you feel? And that then leads into your relationship with that, that platform and what you're actually doing, what you're offering, whether that's you know business, whether that's you know a fitness professional, whether that's jam, honey, yeah. you know, flowers, what it is. It's like, okay, well, it's great that you're promoting your business, which is a tool for businesses now, yeah. you know, more than just a social network to communicate with people is business so my relationship with it is like well yes i am a business mm. and i'm going to choose now after having obviously my own little battles with god i hate it, it's doing my head in i'm just stuck on it all day long yeah it's such a big distraction now they brought out these stats and analytics i've not i'm on the phone for like seven or eight hours a day yeah what yeah <laughs> do the numbers on that you know you know it's not healthy mm. for you to be so distracted by your phone. You're missing nature. You're missing time yeah. with your family. Time just being with yourself, your partner, your kids. And a lot of people, I think, when you look at it in that respect, and I might be going off track a little bit, but put it into perspective, have time aside for when you're going to be on it, where you're going to be adding value. Yeah. You're not just going to be like drone through, flipping, just you know, mm. occupying your brain, catch yourself doing it. Yeah. So use it to your own advantage. Use it to your advantage. It's such a great tool. I, I'm I'm pro phones. I'm pro social because there's so much great content out there coming from people that are super passionate, engaged, and want to do something great with a really powerful message to create awareness and have an impact. It's just you have to choose where mm. your attention is. If you want to put your attention on all this stupid shit that's you know just distracting you, maybe making you making you laugh, which is cool. But if it's just you distracting yourself from your reality, you're not really ever going to fix anything because you're just distracting yeah. yourself. You're not addressing the problem. Also, if you want to follow people that do your head in and you don't like and just irritate you when you come on, you make you make you feel negative or you make you question yourself, and they make you compare yourself. Your choice to keep following them or not. Mm, yeah. Is no one's making you stay on social. Whereas there's probably a load more other people that you could be following that are inspiring, that will motivate, that will get you, that will mean, you know, will want to be honest and genuine, not just tell you a load of crap that's just a load of smoke and mirrors, but trying ah. to sell you something or pretend they care, but really mm. they don't. They're just trying to get something from you. They mm. just want your attention. So it's just having a bit of an awareness and actually, you know, being responsible for the things that you have a choice to change. Yeah. So for me, I'm trying to be more active, you know, on things like, you know, TikTok, 
which is supposed to be for kids. Apple, no, it'll be it'll be it'll be huge, yeah. Hmm. And things like Twitter, which I was never on, because I wasn't just didn't want to stay on my phone, to be on my phone having chats with people. Yeah. But it's like one person said, "Oh, I didn't know you were on here. I do this, this, and this." What do you think of that? Well, that's a really good point, actually. I'm really fascinated by that. I'm having these conversations. Yeah. But then you need to know when to step away, which is why I go into, like, being out in nature. Check yourself. I don't know, call people out. I know you're looking at this post, but you're reading it. How long have you been on your phone for? Is that enough time? Have you got a bit more time? Are you feeling good about it? Are you feeling positive? Or is it nagging you out? Yeah. This is your chance to choose. Mm. And people are like, shit, he got me. He caught me out. <laughs> I've been on the phone for, like, for, like 90 minutes. Mm. I don't know what that time was. Shit, I'm late for what you know. It's like, yeah. what were you? Yeah, time yeah. Is so precious. But it's that distraction <laughs> that will so get precious. you if you're not careful. It will get you. So when it comes to, I, we see how much effort that you put into the actual copy, which goes go along with like Instagram posts. Uh, how is, how important is it to tell a story? Stories, one can be entertaining. Stories <clears throat> can give people depth and context to who you are or what you're talking about or what you, you're trying to bring to their attention. Mm. Uh, it shows honesty, it can be shown vulnerability. You know, it can be, it can take people on a journey with you that aren't there with you. They can feel more connected to you. They can relate to you. They can maybe just find some inspiration on the journey, that, on the story that you're telling them, whether it's a short story, a long story, it has chapters. You know, maybe, you know, it, it, there's so many ways you can tell a story, but I think that's a huge part of showing, you know, someone who you really are, but also bringing the most amount of magic out of your content. Mm. And that can be about flowers, honey, or jam, because mm. people want to know the back backstory. You know, it's still, who doesn't like a story? Like, I'm just looking at it. I'm looking at this, a candle, right? <laughs> I got this from Ogmore by C, and she sells these online. She's just got an Instagram, and I'm actually helping her. What she does, I'm going off target, but this is a candle. <laughs> you know, social media, she, her, her social media is blowing up right now. Because her story is on here. She writes her story on every candle. She collects all <laughs> candles from wherever. She melts them in a pot, gets a wick, and she... She tells you where, where where it's all from. Wow. The story is, I'm recycling obsessed. So I decided to put a sign in this murky window of mine at the village hall and try and help people. The plethora of unwanted candle ends and candles, I put them in a saucepan, I get a wick with a few bits and bobs, and what I find is I make a unique candle made by the sea. <laughs> wow. Something you can take home when you come to visit. I bought 10 of them <laughs> and I gave it to all my friends and all my family because this is a material thing that tells a story rather than a postcard that's just got, or whatever it is. That was just perfect example of real life right there. It just, you know, like, that's it's... so cool, you know, a candle, wow, that's amazing, that's a great idea. It's like, perfect, it, isn't it? You know, it's whatever, it, it's, you know, there you go, stories, you know, are great. <laughs> it's it's one of my, my I always thinking of stories and thinking of your Instagram like watching the rabbits in your garden is always one of my favourite things. So, <laughs> every time. <laughs> Some people just follow me for rabbit camp. I get people every week. Where have you been? Where the rabbits? Stop yeah. Talking about that flipping. Yeah. Where are the rabbits? <laughs> not joking no. I'm telling you whenever I see okay. rabbits you've got rabbits in your garden I knew they'd be I knew more people I knew it wasn't just me I <laughs> do some movement oh, stretches do some <laughs> as soon as I show people rabbits and I've got a bird feeder and sometimes I chase like sheep and they're like can you get me out of here I mean, there's always so many things coming up. Um, I'm in a really great space where there's lots of really great conversations happening. Um, and I'm now putting everything on my website, which has access to where where you can find me around the world. Uh, workshops and classes and programs and exercises and recipes and uh, blogs that I'm writing about my adventures. So it's a really good place to start. And that's... Um, 
at thestrengthtemple.co.uk. Um, but in reference to where you guys are, you know, I've got a workshop coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Maybe, actually, no, three weeks, hang on, two weeks, the 15th of September, so mm-hmm. when this goes out, I guess, so that's probably going to be even less than two weeks. But if it goes well and we have a nice turnout, I'd like to do something in Cardiff every month, and that's going to be at the Stram, the Tram Shed Studio. So, yeah, anything else, you can follow me on all the social channels, the Stram Temple. Nice. Yeah. Nice, superb. Well, thank you so much thank for you joining us. Thank you very, very much for your time. We have wanted oh, you on this podcast God. for a very long time. <laughs> and we're very grateful. Got me. Got me. <laughs>